In today's video, we are going to discuss Lamar Jackson getting back to his old ways, the offensive line, and some things that need to be improved upon. And could one team signing be a problem for the Baltimore Ravens down the road? All this and more coming up next. So today we are going to discuss Lamar Jackson and him getting back to his old self and how this is going to impact the team and maybe the direction that this offense goes in. If you haven't already noticed, Lamar Jackson has slimmed down from last season. Actually, he's down 10 pounds from 2023 and a total of 25 pounds from 2022. Now, to some, this may not be a very big deal, but if you look at it, it is Lamar Jackson trying to get back to his old ways, get his speed back. Over the past few seasons, Lamar has looked a little bit slower than normal, not meaning that he's looked slow, but he's looked slower than he did in the past. And if you heard the interview that Isaiah likely did with Kay Adams, he's saying the old LJ is back. I'm just going to say now, y'all thought L was fast before, Stop. Yeah, I think it caught before. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I can't. Are you telling me that there is yet another level to this cat that we have not seen this this MVP MVP? I don't I don't know if unanimous is going to be the word this year. That's all I'm going to say. And the rest of the NFL should be afraid. They should be very afraid because now what you have is a more efficient passing Lamar Jackson and you add that with his elusiveness and his old speed. This is a former two-time MVP. Now he has put it all together. He has a new offensive coordinator and the Baltimore Ravens are trying to build weapons around him by putting Derrick Henry in the backfield. They got him Zay Flowers. They drafted Taz Walker. So if you marry that concept of Derrick Henry in the backfield and the threat of Lamar taking it the distance on every play, the rest of the NFL, be afraid. Be very afraid. But if Lamar truly is back to his old self, the one thing that I don't want the Baltimore Ravens to do is rely upon Lamar too much. I don't want them to put everything on his shoulders and think, hey, we don't have a game plan. We don't know what to do. Let Lamar go out and do his thing. That stuff should be over by now. That should be a thing of the past. I think that Todd Munkin with having a year working with Lamar Jackson, being in this organization to see how everything runs, he should have full knowledge of what concepts he wants to run. Now, I know that Derrick Henry is a new addition. But the focal point of this office is Lamar Jackson and his skill set. But I beg of you, I plead, please, 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 please do not run this man to death. Even if LJ is back to his sub 4-3 speed or whatever he had when he first came into the league, that is not a license for you to ill. This is not an open curry permit for you to say, Lamar, go do your thing and become our leading rusher once again. That is the one thing that we don't need because with this weight loss and Lamar possibly regaining his speed, the one downside of this is him taking hits. Now, I know that he bulked up with the extra 25 pounds in 2022 to be able to absorb more punishment and possibly get hurt less. So with him slimming down to about 205 pounds, we want Lamar to take as little punishment as possible. So the only possible downside to this weight loss could be Lamar Jackson getting injured knock wood we're not putting that in the air we're not hoping that it happens but it is a possibility this is why we said the ravens need a strong offensive line they need people that can play we don't need hopefuls we don't need prospects we need people that can block for lamar especially since he doesn't have that extra cushion to take those extra hits so my hope is that Andrew Voorhees, Ben Cleveland, Salah, Fa'alele, whomever it may be, steps up and actually fills that void. Because this is a season for me of little to no errors. The margin of error is real thin because we are right there. We are on the cusp of making a Super Bowl. But we need Lamar to stay protected. And also we need offensive linemen that can open up holes for Derrick Henry so we aren't as reliant upon Lamar as in years past. So it is a very big deal that the Ravens are replacing 60% of their offensive line. 60% of Lamar Jackson's protection is going to be brand new. So we need them to get it right. And for all of you that said, hey, we've done a great job with the additions that we've had in the past. I say to you, eh, I'm not really for certain of this. For as well as a lot of people thought that the Ravens offensive line did last season with veterans, they were not as good as we tended to believe. I myself did not know until I came upon a stat earlier this week that the Ravens offensive line and pass protection was not very good. 
I personally thought that they were a little bit better. I didn't think that they were the best, but I thought that they were decent. I did not know that it was that bad. And the stat that told me how far from the top this team's offensive line was, even though PFF had us graded very high, I think they had us in the top five or 10. I'm not certain what it was. And I think all of that had to do mostly is with the rushing numbers. And a lot of the rushing numbers had a lot to do with Lamar Jackson. So that makes the offensive line look a little bit better than it actually was. But for me, as far as pass protection goes, especially going into this season with Lamar and his weight loss is something that kind of caught my eye. And if you don't believe me, we're going to check out these stats right now. So for the 2023 season, the Baltimore Ravens gave up 41 sacks and 494 pass attempts. Some may say that's not all that bad. Mm, 41 sacks is a lot. It's a lot of beating for your quarterback to take, especially when you have a quarterback that runs and he takes hits unnecessarily when your team overutilizes him in the run game. But in comparison to some other teams in the league, and this is not all of them, I just took a couple just to show you the difference in what other offensive lines did compared to ours. Now, once again, 41 sacks and 494 pass attempts. In comparison, the Dallas Cowboys gave up 40 sacks and 614 pass attempts. It's a lot more pass attempts, still one less sack. You say, eh, hand on any bag. Okay. Next up, we have the Detroit Lions. They gave up 31 sacks and 606 pass attempts. It's a lot of pass attempts, a little bit of sacks. Right behind them, we had Green Bay with a first-year starter in Jordan Love, and they gave up 30 sacks and 581 pass attempts. Then rounding out around the bottom two, you had the Kansas City Chiefs, who gave up 28 sacks with, I think, a league-best 635 pass attempts. 635 and it gave up under 30 sacks things kind of opened my eyes a little bit as to how bad this offensive line really was at pass protection now i know that all of this is not on the offensive line sometimes quarterbacks hold the ball too much sometimes just unforeseen things happen but they happen with other teams as well so if we got extra sacks here for the quarterbacks holding the ball they may go for the other teams then we finally look at the team that gave up the least amount of sacks in the buffalo bills the buffalo bills in 579 pass attempts only gave up 24 sacks, 2-4, in damn near 600 pass attempts. So with 100 pass attempts less, the Ravens darn near gave up double the sacks that the Buffalo Bills gave up. This has to change. And I know we're doing things from year to year and they're saying that Todd Munkin and John Harbaugh are getting linemen that fit this scheme. We don't know if we found them yet. And we can't replicate what we did last season. We can't have another season of Lamar getting 40 and 50 sacks. This is not the year to be experimental in my opinion, but hopefully, hopefully things can only get better from here. All right, next up, we're going to talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You say, hey, why are you bringing up the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? How is this relevant in a Ravens space? Well, it is only relevant in this space because Antoine Winfield became the highest paid defensive back, the first safety ever to be the highest paid defensive back in NFL history. He signed a four-year, 80 80- $4.1 million contract with $45 million guaranteed, making him the highest at the time. Now, don't get me wrong, Antoine Winfield Jr. is a dog. I watched his father play, his father was a beast. And this is relevant to us because after the 2024 season, Kyle Hamilton can be offered an extension. Now, granted, we still have year four, we still have a fifth year option. We can still franchise tag him after that fifth year option. There are a myriad of things that we can do that we can technically keep him around for four more seasons after this next season concludes. But do you want to cause a rift? Do you want to cause strife? Do you want to cause these issues? If Kyle Hamilton has anything like he had this past season, because he had a monstrous season last year, he was the top, if not one of the top two safeties in all of the NFL in his second pro season. And if he does it again the third time, is he going to say, hey, I deserve an extension now. I deserve more money, especially after watching Justin Matabike sign for $98 million, his running mate Marcus Williams getting 70 Roquan Smith getting his hundred million dollar deal is this going to become an issue I hope that it does not become a source of contention but in your opinion do you think that the Ravens should jump in front of this offer him an extension after this year or wait to see what he does going forward because I guarantee you if Kyle Hamilton puts together anything close to the season that he had last season and continues to progress in his ascension to becoming the best safety in the NFL the Ravens are going to have a problem on their hands because when it comes to sit down and negotiate with him, they're going to have to kick out big bucks. 
So should they get this out the way now and sign him and just put that to bed and ease their minds? Or should they have the wait and see approach just to see what he does? And like I said, fourth year, fifth year option, two franchise head. Should they wait to do these things or just button it up right now? My opinion is sign the man now and get it out the way before he becomes too expensive because the Ravens are always up against the salary cap and every dollar counts as you are, you know, as they say, what he said. And lastly, we're going to go over a little bit of NFL news. Uh, the Ravens have signed all of their draft picks. No holdouts to worry about. Everything is kosher on that end. But another former Raven has gone to a division rival, the Pittsburgh Steelers to be exact. Cornerback Anthony Averett just signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, for many of you, if you're not familiar, Anthony Averett, he stepped in when we were having cornerback problems and he played pretty well down the stretch, which parlayed a deal. He played for Las Vegas. Is he may have been on some other teams. I mean, maybe a decent signing. It's good insurance for the Steelers, but once again, players have to go where the money is. So I don't blame him. Hope he has a decent season, just not against us. And lastly, and I saved the BS for last. Uh, CBS Sports put out their ranking of the top five quarterbacks in the NFL. And of course, they put Patrick Mahomes at number one, which to many people was expected. I mean, you can argue it, but why would you? Defending two times Super Bowl champs back to back, going for his third. There's what it is. But the surprise to me was number two. At number two, they had Brock Purdy as the second rated quarterback in the NFL. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. This one, I do not get at all. I understand he's played well. He's outplayed his Mr. Irrelevant status. He's taken the team to a Super Bowl. Maybe if he hadn't got hurt to see season before they'd have gone to another one he's done his thing but to put Brock Purdy as the second rated quarterback in NFL I'm not buying then in spots three and four you have the NFL's usual suspects with Josh Allen and Joe Burrow coming in at number five is CJ Stroud which I kind of get he had a monstrous rookie season they've given him a whole lot of weapons and they're building around him which I think he may improve on so I can see him at number five but how is Lamar Jackson not in your top five quarterbacks of the NFL going into the 2024 season he is the reigning MVP. He is breaking records each and every season. And I understand you don't want to put him to the forefront. You don't want to acknowledge that the mobile quarterback is the wave and you're trying to do whatever you can. But you cannot tell me, even if you don't put him at number two, you cannot tell me there are four quarterbacks, arguably, arguably five that are better than Lamar Jackson. So, of course, you know, we call it like we see it. A bullshit, a bullshit. Bullshit. Thanks for rocking out with your boy. Listen, later tonight, NFL schedule release. I cannot wait to see how the Ravens schedule is going to shake out for the next season, but we just sit and wait. So thank you once again. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you are aware when I come out with brand new videos. And until next time, which may be after the schedule release, I don't know. It depends on how busy I am and what I feel like doing. Shh, boy.